Wow, here we are again, folks. Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you today. Do you know that uh, putting these little things on here, God has challenged me to be stewardess in the Bible. Well, to be stewardess in the Bible, you need to go to some scriptures that tell you how to be stewardess. And that is, for instance, in the book of Timothy, Paul the Apostle is writing to a young man that he had won to the Lord. And he had given him a challenge and he had put him in a church as a young preacher. And now he's telling him how to go about his life. Well, this is you and I. Here we are. We're brand new. We've asked the Lord to save us. And we need to get in the book. And we need to find out what the book says. Well, in chapter 1 of 2 Timothy, we see that Paul clarifies in verse 1 that he is an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he is an apostle by the will of God. And that's what he's telling Timothy. Now, this office of apostleship, you know, is not just any kind of office. It's a place of leadership, and usually in a church. And that's where it is. And it does so by special messenger. He's a special messenger. Paul is an ambassador for Jesus Christ. So he's a special messenger, and he's telling Timothy, Timothy, you're going to be a special messenger from now on in the church. So therefore, follow my instruction. Now, uh, when Paul was called to be a messenger for Jesus Christ, he was called by the grace of God. God, remember, met him on the road, knocked him off his mule, blinded him for a few days, uh, spoke to him personally, face to face, and said, this is what I want you to do. And I'm going to tell you how it's going to be done. And sent him into the Gentile world, which Paul, by the way, was a Jew, but he also was a Gentile by uh, Rome, being a Roman citizen. And uh, so according to the uh, promise of life, which is in Jesus Christ. Now Paul saying, Timothy, we have this promise of Jesus Christ. And it is a life eternal. And we are supposed to pass that on. We're not the only ones that have it. We're not the only ones that have found this. Uh, when Jesus died on the cross, he came and died for all peoples. But he's going to use some, like myself, and some like you, to do the work of his work, the work of the gospel. And so he says to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. And this was all made, remember, I just said a minute ago, by the cross of Jesus Christ. Now remember, Paul's writing to this boy as though he were his actual physical son. And we don't know. We don't know if Paul ever had any children or not, was married or not. It doesn't clarify that in the Bible. It doesn't say that. He, he remained single as far as we know. So to, we know that Timothy, him being called son, is a one that he won to the Lord. And let's look at verse 3. He said, I thank God whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience. Now isn't that something? That he was out killing the Christians. But you know that he believed he was serving God from Abraham down. He thought that he was serving God from his forefathers because he was justified by the law. And by the law, these Christians were breaking the law. They were saying, the law is passed. Now all we need is uh, to have, uh, we don't need the law anymore. And because they say in that, that they don't need the law anymore, that Paul is saying that we're now living under grace. And excuse me, I was adjusting my volume control here. So he said, I thank God for whom I am served from my forefathers uh, without ceasing in remembrance of you in my prayers night and day. Now this is very important. I fail here. I fail bad here. 
Many times I fail here. I have a young man in my sights right now that is up and coming. And I have him on my prayer list and praying for him on a regular basis. And we need to pick somebody out. Have God show us somebody that we could pray for, that they would grow and that they would uh, enhance in it. Let's look at verse 4. Greatly desiring to see you. Now, Paul's putting a personal application in here. And he's saying, Timothy, I, I really would love to see you, son, but I'm not going to be able to. Because Paul was in prison in Rome, remember? At this period of time when he was writing this epistle. And uh, being uh, manifold of your tears. He said mindful, excuse me. He was mindful of the tears that Timothy had for him. <laughs> and the tears that Timothy had for uh, other things. Timothy was a, a young man with a, a good heart. He said, I may be filled with joy. Paul said that I may be filled with joy. And what he's saying here, I know it was just a short time, and he desired to see Timothy. But when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you. Now, Paul knows Timothy because of his mother and grandmother, he knows who he's dealing with. So he recalls the time when he first met Timothy. Now he's talking about when Timothy was a young man. And Paul interviewed him and uh, gave him the, put him in the evangelistic team. This is in Acts chapter 16 and verse 1 through 3, which dealt with the, with, uh, in, uh, when he was in you, when he was young, his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that it is in you also. Now he said, "I know that in your grandmother and in your mother the Holy Spirit dwelt, and they planted it in you, and you were already headed in the right direction when I met you, and now you are being grafted in to the work." Wherefore I put you in remembrance that you stir up that gift of God referred to uh, uh, when he had his first call in life, when Timothy had his first call. Do you know that some of us had a call? I had a call. November 5th, uh, uh, 1972, 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, when the Lord knocked me out of my sinful life, and said, I'm going to save you, and I want you to do different. I want you to go a different direction. I want you to do different. And he sent me uh, in a different direction. And as I started in that direction, I had to leave off the things of the world and go in that direction. And so he, he said, I'm putting your remembrance. <laughs> this refers to the entirety of the call of God in Timothy's life. He said, now, which he knew by the putting on of my hands. Now, he baptized Timothy. He put his hands on Timothy. And he said, son, from what God has put in me, I'm anointing you with this. I want you to go out and do this. Well, this doesn't mean that Paul bestowed the gift upon him because Timothy got the gift from inside from God. But Paul's verifying that he knows and can see that Timothy got it. And he's saying, Timothy, I'm, I'm backing you up, boy. I'm backing you up that you have got what you're supposed to have. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of prayer and power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, this is Paul telling him again where he is, and Timothy knows where he is, but Paul's stirring this up in him, and stirring it up in his mind, and telling the young evangelist, now Timothy's a young evangelist now, because uh, of the Spirit, and of the power, and, and how that he will, as he gives the Holy Spirit room in his heart, he can grow. And, and he keep the faith of the cross. And if you uh, take a little note right here and uh, I'll put down Romans 8, 1 and 2 and uh, Romans 8 and 11, Romans 8 and 13. And be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord. 
Never ever be ashamed of the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. Always be ready. Now Paul's prepping Timothy to always be ready. Always be ready. Be careful you can miss. I have missed it. I have missed. I missed winning a guy this week. I believe I had him at the door. But because I'd been listening to another preacher the night before talking about a man that had been, he had come to a church. He had come forward and said, I asked Jesus to give me of my sin, come in my heart and save my soul. A year later, he goes to another one, another meeting, and he does the same thing. And he does it over and over in his life, never really receiving the fact that he wanted to culminate and say, I've done it one time, it's right, I'm here. You're only born one time, and you can only be born into the kingdom one time. But when you're really born in, you won't come do it again. You can come ask God for you, to forgive you of your sin, but that's not coming in again. That's saying, I want to be refreshed here, and, and that's what that's doing. Be thou partaker of the uh, affliction, of the gospel according to the power of God. What is the affliction? The affliction is, is that some people are going to reject you. And if you're going to be a preacher and you're going to be a teacher and you're going to be a worker in God, some people are going to just plain spurn you off. And then he said, who has saved us? He's talking about uh, and asking, he's talking the power of God which is given to us by the grace of God. We have power in God through the grace of God that he has given to us. And he has put us to the test. And we are to be, in verse 9 he said, he saved us. How did he save us? Through what he did on the cross. He was willing to go to the cross for you and I. That we could be saved. And he called us with a holy calling. Now we're called with a holy calling. He didn't call us everybody and anybody. And he calls everybody and anybody. But he doesn't put everybody and anybody in the ministry. He puts those in the ministry who he believes will follow through with it. But according to his own purpose. And what is his own purpose? That we would pass on that grace. This refers to the reasoning and the means which was given us in Christ Jesus. Because he came and lived in me, I had the means in me to pass it on to you. <coughs> Through what he did on the cross before the world began. We can't go into that one before the world began. We can't go into that right now, but Jesus was with God before the world began. When anything was spoken, when the earth was spoken into existence, God the Father said to the Son, we're going to speak the world into existence. And Jesus did the speaking. Uh, it was given in Christ Jesus through what we did at the cross. What he did, excuse me, at the cross. Before the world began. Before the world began. Mark that down in verse 9. Before the world began. The cross of Christ is the very first doctrine of the Bible actually foreordained before the foundation of the world. Look at 1 Peter 1, 18 and 20. Consequently, every true doctrine is built on the foundation of the cross or else it's not a true doctrine. If you have an ESPN Bible or a, a ESP Bible or a, a EVA or if you have whatever you have, if it doesn't build on the foundation, the same one that the King James built off from, then you don't have the proper Bible. You have a Bible that's not telling you the truth. They left out many things and they changed many things that are actual facts. You cannot change the fact of the way the book of Timothy is written in the King James Version if you change any of the words of it. You've changed the meaning of the Bible. You need to get a King James Version. If you're a poor person and you're watching this, and you can do like me. I've got dozens of Bibles in this house. A big majority of them came from the Goodwill. If it's a, a, soft, a soft Bible, uh, like for instance, I've got, I've got one right here. This is soft cover. Because it's not hard cover, 
It's a dollar and a half at the Goodwill. Hardcover books are two fifty. Uh, if they wanted to complain and say, "Well, I think Miss Dutchin, this is a hardcover book," I say, "Fine, give me two. Take charge me an extra dollar." <laughs> if they're concerned about that dollar, so they charge me an extra dollar. But I've got them all over the house. I've got those that are Bibles that I wouldn't use to preach by, but I look at the different changes in them and I find places in them where they change the word to where it doesn't mean the same thing. If it's different, it's different. If it's different, it's different. And uh, do you know that you can't recap? And I listened to a preacher this week, and I heard him, and, and he was so good. He was preaching at a camp meeting. His name was Tom Hayes. You may have heard of him. But he was, uh, look him up. You might find him on the Internet. Tom Hayes. Good, good preacher, good preacher. Guy. Camp meeting preacher. Uh, when I was listening to him, that tape was, uh, that I was listening to was probably uh, from the 70s or 80s. And he had preached that year, 37 camp meetings. And... Uh, he talked about the recap. And I, like I said a few minutes ago about a man coming in and getting saved every year. Getting saved every year. He didn't save every year. He's not got saved yet. He needs to get saved one time. When he gets really saved, he won't have to be keep coming back. So, he said, be takers of the, the affliction. And a lot of people, that's their problem. They don't want to be partakers of any affliction. They don't want anybody to say, oh, you're one of them Christians. Say, yeah, I am. Yep, I sure am. <laughs> uh, but it is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ who has abolished death. Did you know when Jesus died on the cross, he abolished death for you and I? Do you know when this body goes to death and dies, we become alive forever? That we will live forever? in heavenly places with God if we're saved we will live forever in hell fire and damnation if we're not saved can you imagine being in hell after living on this earth having somebody tell you about heaven having somebody tell you about Jesus Christ and you rejected it and you rejected uh, what the preacher said and you decided you wanted to die and go to hell so you die, and in hell you lift up your eyes and you look. Now you're in flame, and you're squirming, and you're, and you're dying. And, and, and Luke uh, 16 and 19 tells us of a rich man who died and went to hell. He didn't go to hell because he was rich. He went to hell because he wouldn't believe the, what the beggar said to him. The beggar said to him, Sir, if you would ask Jesus to give you of your sin, come in your heart and save your soul, you can go to heaven. The man said, I don't believe that. I don't believe that bunch of junk. Get out of my gate. I don't want you around me. Go on. So, when he dies, he's in hell. Now he's begging. And he asked Abraham to send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger and a drop of water and cool his tongue for his torment in his flame. What do we see in this picture? We see in this picture that when you go to hell, you can see into heaven. Now, you think, this, you think hell's bad? You think the fire in hell is bad? Yeah. But you're going to be tormented in your physical mind. The very mind you have right now is going to be tormented. That you're going to look and see those in heaven that told you about heaven and you rejected it. You're going to see them walking on streets of gold. You're going to see them living in forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And never not see them. Always see them forever and ever and ever. While you're squirming, they're living a life in God. Walking around on streets of gold. Being used in a world that is fixing to come. That God is going to make a new world for those people. And put them in it and use them. And God has given them perfect bliss forever. And eternal life. An eternal life. They can eat from the twelve uh, manner of fruit by the river of life. And uh, be there all the time. That's showing a picture of them actually eating in heaven. 
and walking on streets of gold. So you're walking, you're eating, you're thinking, you're talking, you're looking, you're, you're seeing things, you've got water to drink. What is that telling you? That's telling you that you're going to have a spiritual body. Just like that guy has a physical body in hell. He's in a body in hell, the same body that he went to hell with. This body does not like fire. Take that finger right there and light a match and stuck it to that finger and see how you like it. And that would be nothing compared to what hell is. Now, Paul is chiding this young soldier boy, Timothy. He's become a soldier boy of the cross. And he's preaching the cross across the country. And Paul's saying to be instant in season, Timothy. Be instant out of season. He's saying when you're thrown out there, wherever you are dropped off, Let's say that Timothy's walking down the road, the dusty road, and a guy comes by with a cart and said, hey, you want to ride? And Timothy, yeah. yeah, and he jumps on the cart. Wherever he jumps off the cart is where his preaching place starts. Well, it just started when he jumped on the cart. His duty is to win the man on the cart to the Lord. When he jumps off the cart, wherever it is, to go ahead and go to work again, start preaching again. A lot of people say to me, Brother Peter, well, Peter, how come you dressed yesterday? A man came in and said, how come you dress like that? I said, I dress like this because I'm an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And I want people, when I walk up to them and talk to them, I want them to know I'm an ambassador. And that they respect the fact that when I say that, they believe I am. Why do they believe it? Because I'm willing to go out looking like I look. I'm willing to go out looking like this. Morning, noon, and night. Two or three o'clock in the morning. Go down to the truck stop. And witness to people. And and be, be, be a witness. That's what Paul's teaching Timothy to do that. See? Uh, I have really uh, rattled on here. And we're at 22 minutes here. And I was going to be, this is a half hour uh, excerpt. And I'm going to get up to verse 18. And, and if I can, any way possible. And I'm in uh, 1 Timothy uh, 2 Timothy, excuse me, chapter 1, and in verse uh, 11. Uh, let's go back to verse 10 first. But it's now made manifest. All right, let's go back up to verse 9. Who has saved us? Jesus Christ, we remember, he's made us partakers, and he saved us through that that he did on the cross, and he called us with his holy calling. If you were called, you're called with a holy calling. Uh, we didn't call him, rather he called us. We didn't call Jesus now and say, hey, I want to go to work for you. No, Jesus said, hey, I want you to go to work for me. And uh, not according to our own works. It's not according to what we do in our works. But salvation is by grace through faith, not by works. Ephesians 2 and 8 and then uh, and 9. But according to his own purpose. Now, it's according to his own purpose and his grace that he wants you to go out and be the witness. Refers to the reason and the means. The reason is, is because he wants us to. And the, the, the means is, he's going to give us the Holy Spirit to do it. What was given through Christ Jesus before the world began. Now, we crossed that bridge a few minutes ago. Now, let's jump back over to verse 12. For the which cause to establish a church. Now, Timothy is going to establish a church. I also suffered these things when I, an imprisonment myself. Nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. Well, <laughs> Paul didn't have to be ashamed. Hey, he won the guard to the Lord. He won the he won all the prisoners in there to the Lord. When the when the angel uh, broke the bars loose and opened up the jailhouse, nobody left. They didn't get up and leave. Why? Paul had won them to the Lord. He said, hey, you can be satisfied in jail if you've got Jesus in your heart. When you've got Jesus in your heart and you meditate on him and keep your mind on him, you won't be forlorn. You won't be having the problems you're having. If you're having problems that you've done, well, I, I have a little bit of a deal. Um, my, the Lord saw fit to take my wife to heaven in April this year and 
I had slipped last week into a uh, place of <coughs> uh, just a molly grubs of being alone. I'm in this house. I'm in a 3,000 foot house by myself. No other body in here but me. And just, I, I've got all my study stuff everywhere. Everybody comes in, they go crazy because, man, you got stuff everywhere. It's laying everywhere. Well, I study everywhere. I study all over the house. I turn around and study at the table behind me. I can study at this table I'm sitting on all the way around it. I've got, this is a round table. I've got books all the way around it that I study. I got round table behind me. I got stuff all the way around it that I study. I got table over here, one over there. I got books everywhere. Some people consider that clutter. I don't consider it clutter. I walk from book to book and I study. And if it is clutter, it's my clutter. <laughs> And when they visit me, they have to put up with it. And uh, so, uh, God's gave me the desire to study and to preach and to teach. But I'm a human body and I'm a human being. And if I'm not careful, I'll slip into those dark places. Of after being married nearly 60 years, then you're by yourself. This is a big change. But Paul says to me, hey, Look at me. I was in prison and I didn't change. They locked me up and I won the jailer to the Lord. He opened the bars and said at night, come on out and sit at my desk and talk to me. Paul went out there by lamplight and wrote Bible verses that he put in this Bible sitting in the prison house. He wrote this book to Timothy in the jailhouse. How did he do that? Most of those guys are in the inner jailhouse. They don't have any light at night. They don't have any light in the day. And they sure don't have any parchment. And they sure don't have any ink. And they don't have a quill. And they don't have anything. When Paul was locked up, he was locked up with nothing. So what does he do? He wins the jailer to the Lord and he says to the jailer, I need these things right here. This is what I need. I need a quill. I need some ink. I need some parchment. I need all this stuff. So I can write a letter to my, my son Timothy. And the Lord, and I need to, uh, I need to encourage him, and I want to write this letter of encouragement to him. And so, this new convert gets at Paul everything he needs. <laughs> he sits down and he writes this letter, and you and I'm reading it a couple thousand years later, verse 14, that good things which was committed unto you keep by the Holy Spirit which dwells in us. Now he, he adds, he's talking directly to Timothy about himself. Keep those things and this and that. And then he said, which dwells in us. Both of us. <coughs> we both have this Holy Spirit. He's constantly presenting the reaction to a person or peoples or whoever he's talking to about stirring up the Holy Spirit, which is in you. And this you know, all they that which are in Asia be turned away from me. Well, Paul's saying to Timothy, you know, I went down to Asia and I want a bunch of people. Now they've all turned away, uh, of whom I, uh, 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 Philagus and Hermogenes. Now they two, those two people were, uh, they were, were faithless people. They, they didn't have the faith to follow. And they came on board and they didn't follow. Now Onesimus, the Lord gave mercy unto the house of Onesimus. Uh, because Onesimus followed through. For he <clears throat> often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. But Paul was always in chains. And he, he wasn't talking about just the chains of real chains from in Roman soldiers, even though he was in chains. But he said, my chains of spirituality, the spiritual guy that I am, I'm not ashamed of my chains. All right, and he's not ashamed of them. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently and found me. This was a man that was kind to an apostle. Now the Lord grant unto him that he may find mercy of the Lord in that day. Now he's speaking of the day of redemption when he goes to heaven 
that Paul would give him an extra place. God would give him, Jesus Christ would give him, Onesimus, a special place in that place called heaven. And that's our time has come and gone. We will see you next time. This is Brother Peter. Bye-bye. What's happening here?